name is Bill Chafin. Um, this is Eric Botts. And you may recognize us. We get to bounce around and visit everybody on occasion and say hello and, and be nice and, 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 and help you guys uh, maintain your buses. Now, how many are, um, are drivers here? How many drivers do we have here? The majority. And the, and the bus owners? No owners. Oh, that's great, because we're going to talk bad about the owners. <laughs> I'm here to tell you. <laughs> All these people raised their hands and said they were drivers. Uh, it's John. You are. You are. You got to be here today. Yeah. Um, so what we're going we're gonna to talk about um, mostly is the uh, pre-trip and post-trip. Um, we know that you've got most of the guys um, are doing a very good job doing that in the morning, most of the drivers. Some places that we go to and visit, we try to get there in the morning and watch. Um, sometimes the technicians are out there doing the uh, free trip for the drivers, which is a good thing. Um, whoever's doing it doesn't matter to us as long as it's getting done. Um, there's really nothing in Comar that, that forces a, a bus driver that, that drives from, from school to um, home, home to school and back to do a free trip. But what we want to happen, and, and this is going to be on the owners and the Board of Education, to make it happen. And um, what we're trying to avoid is, is extra paperwork. Um, some of the counties are doing stuff like having the pre-trip faxed or emailed in to the Board of Ed every morning after the driver's door. So, so what we're trying to really institute is a pre-trip routine that everybody's doing and it's something that's easy and um, that everybody will jump on board. So uh, Eric Fox is going to take over from here and go over some of um, what we're expecting and what we would like to happen and, and what we want the owners and the Board of Ed to Institute for uh, pre-trip routine. Thank you, sir. So does everybody do their fruit trip in the morning before they get on their bus and leave the lot? Yeah. All right. Good answer. Um, some things we've ever today will be some of you guys, some of it won't. Mm -hmm. Some of the stuff we've heard is probably boring. We have some photos. That's exciting. Some people like photos. What we're going to do is we're going to try to make a 30-minute PowerPoint and turn it into 50 minutes. So it's, it's so uh, we'll do our best to uh, yeah. keep you guys entertained. Short and sweet and quick, I guess. Uh, so Bill, I told you we're going to do our pre trip inspection. We got some inspection data to go over. New technology. You guys are bus drivers. New technology kind of pertains to the owners, the buses. So we'll go over it with you guys. So our pre trip in the morning. By finding problems before the vehicle leaves a lot, we reduce the risk of breakdowns and we lower the risk of accidents caused by manufacturing uh, mechanical failure. You know, we have some people go around and do pre trips in the morning, find things wrong, you tell your mechanic, or they hey, what's wrong, but you gotta get fixed. Hopefully, the alert stuff mechanic goes above and beyond and makes it work. But sometimes it's just a light out, tight light, headlight, kind of turn to cheek and hey, we gotta get the kids to school. Here's, here's one thing I have noticed. Sorry. Very good. Um, I have been, and, and this is a few months back, I was showing up early at uh, bus lots prior to inspection and that kind of thing, you know, scheduled inspections, and, and just watching. Um, and for the most part, 90% of the drivers at all bus lots were doing a fabulous free trip. Um, all the lights, walking around, looking at tires, and that kind of thing. But that 10%, um, those guys are the ones that are going to have a blowout going down the road. Uh, and, and not that it happens frequently in, in Maryland, because most of the accidents that we run into are another driver and not the, uh, the uh, licensed, the, uh, the professional driver's issue. And most of it is caused by something that happens um, with somebody else doing what they're not, not, not supposed to be doing. Um, but it's kind of... 10% of 10,000 buses is a lot of buses not getting a free trip. So, so we're going to really focus on those guys. And um, it, it, it's really was sad to see. And, and 
And you know, when you have 10 buses at a lot and none of them are getting checked, and, and I'm not gonna say where, what county we're at, and it's not this one, um, because this one does it, it's fabulous, so there's no, you know, there's, there's no issues for us to come down here and, and watch, but um, it, it's really terrible to see that, that this isn't getting done. So, what are the requirements to obtain the CDL to pass the free trip inspection? By using the same team that was needed to achieve your CDL, you can fairly easily reduce the number of repair tickets issued, the time spent, time we to get your uh, tax back, tax taken for issues that were found with the free trip inspection, or if we do a spot check. So, for instance, if Bill's got a bus and do a free trip, by come to a spot check, and geez, Bill's got a bad tire, taking Bill's tags because he didn't tell his owner or we can't get a bad tire of Bill using his bus. Right. Now, the bus can't be used. I have the tags, and I'll be going from here. I'll be going down to Worcester County. And you call me back and say, hey, Eric, where you got any my tags back? Sorry, I'm on my way down to Ocean City now. You got to wait on me now. Right. You're calling out the contractor, barring buses. Right. And we try to get we try to get tags back within a week. Um, we don't have to. So, um, we're, we're, we're doing a really good job if we pull tags. <coughs> once we get that call, we try and get somebody to reinspect um, within seven days. Um, sometimes it'll be longer. Sometimes you're running a bus, you know, for five, six days. So that's one thing that a free trip will, will help avoid. The bus drivers are responsible for what happens during the operation of their vehicle while on the side routes. Drivers should assure that the vehicle is free from physical or mechanical conditions that present clear and apparent danger to the well-being of the passengers. Perform a good pre-trip inspection as part of being a professional licensed driver. A pre-trip inspection of a school bus should be conducted each day by the bus driver before the AM and PM routes. For a few minutes invested by the driver may result in saving a life, property, or downtime. Bus drivers are not expected to be mechanics, but by following some of the guidelines by using Fair checklist drivers can better determine if the bus is safe for use. I said pretty much no one ever knows everything about a school bus, but obviously you can look at something that's not right or it sticks out to you like, hey, this is weird. No, no, ask. Mm -hmm. Most of, um, well, now pretty much all of the inspectors um, at one time in their life have been truck mechanics. So when, when we're doing inspection, we know, you know what we're looking for. Um, drivers don't have to be, um, but you can tell when the tire is bald, you know. Um, do we, are you expected to crawl up underneath of it and check the exhaust? No, I mean, we can't. That's something that, you, that you're not, shouldn't be doing. Anyway. Um, but you can hear when, you, when the truck's running, you can hear a, um, if it's an air brake bus, you can hear an air leak, you know, that type of thing. So just kind of be aware, you know. It, it, and you drive the bus every day, the same one most of the time. Um, if you hear a different noise, let your tech know. You know, this is there's something funny that's not the same. Um, could be just be a broken pipe, a broken exhaust pipe that, that just needs a quick well, you know, 10, 15 minutes. Um, the same with like the big tears in the seat. Some of the kids are, are terrors and they find a little hole and they're going to make it this big. Well, if it's this big, we're taking it out of service. So, um, you know, those seats can be replaced in, in 10 minutes. Um, the seat covers anyway. Um, so, you know, just keep an eye out for that, and especially before inspection, as long as we don't see it then. Uh, drivers should file a set free trip pattern or produce produce the uh, owner or the VIA uh, store of it. As instructed, each owner should be responsible for ensuring a set free trip pattern or procedures available that the driver can use to maintain consistency. So, pretty much like we get new inspectors. I've got the same routine. Well, Everyone does everything a little bit different. You get your routine down the same day, your same routine every day. Yeah. The same day, it kind of comes to your head and what you want to do. Yeah, so we're going to, so that, that's what we're asking the owners to, to do um, is produce or put together something um, that all the drivers can use um, and they'll use it every day. And it's just a checklist. I mean, there's a whole lot of new tools. There's the Zonar, there's the tablets, there's, um, you can download them to your smartphone and just do your walk around the bus on your smartphone and um, send it to your, send it to the, um, the owner. There's a whole lot of 
looking at some ways to, to really do a, a really good free trade. Um, and, it, and it makes you think, like, who would have thought that, not that a, a clearance light is going to put the truck out of service. I'll mention that when I get back to Hawaii, you know, and then it's forgotten. Um, or a brake light is out. I'll mention that when I get back. I gotta go. You know, it, it's if it's done on paper or it's done on some form, it'll be remembered. And you guys, you, you've already passed the responsibility off of you to your owner or your technician. I told you about it when you take care of it. You know, so now it's not your fault for not mentioning it. Type of thing. And we also understand that nobody really wants to be out of their truck. They don't want to be in a spare because, you know, it could be an, an old POS, you know, but at the same time, you know, you want to, the most important thing here is really just keeping the kids safe and, and reducing the um, camera failures and that kind of thing. So, some examples of the inspection items that you can uh, allow you to take out of service for, you know, you walk, you walk around as you know, your uh, lights, signal stop, headlights, clearance, ID lamps, uh, side markers, license plate, lamps, backup lights, your eight-way system, that's very important one. Uh, entrance door, mirror, windshield, a window glass, reflectors, uh, fuel tank, the cat, uh, fuel tank, you can see that when you can keep it on the ground. Uh, Wheels, lugs, rims, spacers, tires, mud flaps, spraying, shock absorbers. That's one of the things you have to be on the ground this way look. Right. Shock absorbers in the front. If you pop the hood check under the hood, you can obviously grab a shock. Yeah. Um, uh, your battery box. Open the door, check your battery box. Make sure it's secure, tight. Cables aren't rubbing through, rubbing anything. Uh, we have, for the internal, we got, you know, engine running, parts break on. Check your oil pressure, volt meters, fuses and brakes, uh, your brake I mean, your light indicators, certain signals, four ways, headlamps, brake lamps, park brake lamps, uh, your eight-way lamps on the inside. Some of us have a little thing up in the corner where you can see the lights flash. Your fuel gauge is functional. Uh, your important thing is your driver's seat belt, which that works, horns, heaters and frosters, uh, your mirror to probably adjust it, your windshield wipers work. You'll be amazed how many buses we've come across in Ocean City and Garrett County where winter wipers don't work. How can you drive a bus with no winter wipers? You see it all the time. It blows my mind. Um, make sure your safety equipment's there, fire extinguishers, reflective triangles, first aid body fluid cleanup kits, uh, port thing, your seatbelt cutters, and check your seats. Um, yes. All these things, um, and I know there's some on this list that you wouldn't be looking for, like, uh, um, the springs and shackles and that kind of thing. Um, but by driving the bus, you'll, you're going to hear a, a, a rattle, a new rattle. You know, it's your bus. You know, you, you, you're used to it. You, you know when there's a new noise. Um, so, a lot of this stuff that we're showing you is stuff that we're looking for that you may not. And it's just something to keep in mind. And so, what we have here, and Eric's going to go over it. Uh, this is a sample, and there's a whole bunch of, of, of online, and they're, they're free just to, to download um, a pre-trip, you know, and they're easy to, they're easy to do here. We have a pre-trip that we do every day. Right. Oh, do you? Okay, very good. Yeah. Okay. In some places, they just wait yeah, they don't. They don't. They don't. So, so that's why we're here preaching this, because yeah. Yeah, people who do it good, and you have that one bad person who doesn't do it, and we just all the good people. That's why we have classes like this, because you have one bad apple, we're for everybody. Yeah, and we go to some counties, and it's just, it's just not done. They'll, they'll walk around, I'm sure, they look at their boss, um, but there's no official uh, sheet that they use. So here's a few examples we find. You know, this is an emergency window, the handle's taped down. I get it one in the road, the handle's probably wore out, it's bouncing, and the handle comes up. We don't tape it down, because now you have a five-year-old kid that's in that bus. Right. Can't get that duct tape off, they can't get out. And, and this happened because, well, of course, I, I, I need to get on my route, and I didn't want to be in the loaner. I didn't want to be in the spare bus. Yeah. This bus here, uh, the window is broken. Um, basically, once again, I appreciate walking around the morning, hey, this window is broken. If it's less than six inches, 
we can do a 30 day, uh, 30 day repair order. What's the difference with extensions? It's no good, bad, disaster, taking your tax. This would be some kid hitting your head against it, punching it, or someone just having a bad day. But this person here is just too lazy to fix it. Most of these pictures that we're showing you, we found this after the buses returned to Guam. You know, yeah, something like that could happen on that route. But, yeah, we're, we're catching this stuff as the buses are coming back in. This bus here is being used. Uh, as you see, they call it a tree branch this morning for the driver told me, and the owner told me, just drive the bus, it's fine. In this particular bus, the mirror was just off the hood, the lights are missing the top. Uh, the guy was telling me it rained, the water would come in by the eight-way light, flicking inside of the bus. This is something where like said, the driver found it, supposedly, tells the owner the owner just want to fix it. It's just silly, you're hauling people's kids. You're not hauling fruit down the road highway, you know. Someone's love was the one bus. This bus here in the back by the door that had a rust hole through, and the owner, instead of fixing it, probably sheet metal, they just filled it with the foam and took a razor blade, made it smooth, and thought it's an acceptable. A little kid can pull that foam out, stick their hand in there, cut their finger open, and we have a new headache on our hands. Another emergency window. The driver, they say they reported it, but they had a pencil holding the window shut. A little kid pulled the pencil out, go around the corner, a little kid can fall right the window, and don't even know it. It's just yeah, they brought, they brought, out the part, let's fix it. And they brought that to inspection like that. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, this bus here was on a field trip, and supposedly a tree limb fell down and hit the roof and crushed the roof of the bus in. But the owner, once again, refused to fix it. It's still being used. One of our inspectors came across it, uh -huh. and the driver did say that he did. Uh, <coughs> they turned to their owner. It rain once again, water would come in. And the photo doesn't really show just in person. It was, it was pretty bad in person. All right. Who wants to tell me what's wrong with this school bus? I got any volunteers. <laughs> All right. That's one. What else? The, the one up there by the number. Okay. The, yes, tape. All right. What else we got? It's kind of hard to see. It's kind of hard to see. All right. So this is what we got. There's something on the front of it. So, Halloween and Christmas inspire two more holidays in the whole school year. People love to decorate their school buses. Unfortunately, if the bus is a manufacturer with it, you can't add it to the bus. Decorations are nice, kids like them, but it's a distraction. A little kid went to the front of the bus to look at this penguin. You got real close, you got a little five year old kid, you don't see it, take off. Little genius got ran over. Another big pet peeve. The dash of the bus. It's loaded with pencils and pens and tissue boxes. Why not? It can't be there. It's a projectile thing. You hit the brakes, it goes flying. It's one in the eye. You're the bus driver, it's you in the eye. I know we have a for being the mean people. People like to decorate, but it can't be there. Um, extra paper inside the bus. It's not fire retardant, it adds fuel to the fire. Yeah, we're the mean people who preach and preach and preach. Or if you put it on your bus, you know you come to inspection, take it off. So I'm going to be the bad guy. Yeah. <laughs> report, report to your owner, hey, your free pool have decorations on the bus. Does anybody know what this is? This is an air brake chamber. It's off an air brake bus yep. that's been broken for a while. Uh, we came across it and asked the person to do the pre trips. When the last inspection done? They had no answer for them. So we took their tags. This is you break system. That didn't work. Rust was not the problem. So that side, that rear chamber, that side of the bus, those brakes were not working at all. <laughs> and the air was just hissing. The rest were. These are all Maryland buses that we found in Maryland that we come across. 
Right. Some people love us, some people hate us. We're here to be bad guys. We're here to keep everyone equal across the state. Yeah, just sue me now 47 times. Just accept 47 students on that You will be amazed at the stories we tell you and the things you come across. Some people want to get rid of our apartment, but unfortunately, it's the things we find. And you can get away with us, our apartment. Who, who catches people like this? There's no repercussion for people like this. Um, what happens to the contractors or whoever owns these buses and puts them out on the road like this? So for most counties how it works, we stumble across these things, right? They can take their tag, report to the board of ed. And the board of ed pays for their insurance, they pay for the bus, they like in our county they give you a report card, A through D or A through E. And A is great. So next year you do your bid, you get more bids. You get a lower score, you get take bids away from it. You're penalized. And finally, you get so bad of a record, you just kick you out the door. Okay. Sorry about your luck. Yeah. So, if I'm right, this was a private bus that wasn't governed by the Board of Ed. Um, but now, this person has an issue. And we've got their tags in their apartment. Kids are getting ready to come out and want to go home. Mm -hmm. I'll have you part of this bus. Oh, my. Mm -hmm. Get out of here. So this was a uh, city bus. Oh, I can believe it. Um, this gentleman came back from a run. The driver said, I hold kids. Well, unfortunately, your tags are now mine. The tires ball, it's a left front tire. The owner shows up and says, can't take my tags. I got kids the holiday. Not today, you're not hauling kids with this bus. The right front tire is just as bad. So this person here lost her contract with the city. This is a Baltimore City bus. I probably should say that loud, but it's the Baltimore City bus, so they lost their contract. This gentleman in our office confronted me personally and said, you cost you my job. No, you cost you yourself your job. You should, there's no reason for that tire to be that bad. That's just, yeah, it's just silly. Don't laugh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we had someone. We had someone call our office and say, you guys have a school bus filing snow. <laughs> We're like investigators. We keep hunting and hunting until we find it. Oh and we God. came across this guy's house and we found the school bus. What he was doing was using the red eight-way lights, turning them on, hard and stop. He's plowing snow down the road. You can't do that. It's illegal. In Maryland, if you sell a school bus and you're not using it for school purposes or church reasons, it can't be yellow. Can paint a whole different color, take the eight-way lights out. So we are semi-nice. We made him paint the rest of the bus a different color. We made him take out his red lights off. We'll let him keep the yellow lights because he's piling snow, so people can see him. We are nice about that. But yeah, he had a snow plow, the bus is cut in half, and the back side of the bus has got the salt spreader on the back. I just found a bus the last Monday in Parker County. A gentleman was picking up kids. I was at a preschool. The bus pulled in. No markings on the bus. Yellow pick up kids. Not using anybody likes. So I follow him. Because that poor in Parker County picks up another kid. No anybody likes. Now he's not following, he pulls over, I pull over, he leaves, I leave. Finally he pulls over again, I tap my horn, flash my lights. He has car tags on the school bus. Uh, no markings. So I explained to him who I was, I worked for the NBA, face ID, I showed him my state ID, I gave him a business card. So where are you going? He says, I have God's children on the bus. Okay. So when you're hauling a bus, get the legally. You have car tags on your bus, your bus isn't even marked right. So I said, where are you going? Five miles from the street. So I'm following and I drop off his kids. Well, before he gets the kids off the bus, he comes up to me and says, I don't know you're an imposter. So I'm a state vehicle, I'm sure you're sure you all my identification. <laughs> the business card I gave you, use that card to call the office. Someone wants to verify who I am. He tells me I don't have a phone. Uh -huh. So I use my phone, call the office, put on speaker, they verify who I was. He lets the kids off the bus to go to the church. He comes back to me and says, God asked you to turn your head because we need to get the kids to the circle today as well. Well, I told the gentleman, I said, I hope the church is cold inside because you're not using your bus. I said, I'm not saying you are, but you could be a child predator. I said, buses in Maryland are yellow. Kids know they're safe. If you're a child predator and you have a yellow bus, hey, little boy, get on my bus. The kid thinks it's okay. 
That's why we don't allow just anybody to have a yellow sports on our roof. So they say, I took that gentleman's tags, and he's in the process of painting his bus a different color, but he's got other issues. <laughs> I draw a bus in town, you're all jealous. You pay $100,000 for a school bus new, and after 12 or 15 years, it's worth $1,000 $1, and $2,000. It ain't worth much. You see a lot of them on a watermelon farm, the farm. A lot of people buy them overseas, take them overseas and use them. Because uh, in Maryland, for county school run buses, that's most counties are 12, some are up to 15 years. But if you're in the private world, or the churches or daycares, you can run forever. Yeah. My personal opinion, I don't agree with that, but that's just my personal belief. Because after 15 years, the school bus is pretty much done. It's had its fair share of life. It's pretty much finished with. Ah, all right. So I'll turn to Bill. Bill, go over some of these specs we got. Um, and these are impressive. This is just this year. Um, as of, I think, June is when I put this together. Um, so these, these, this data that I'm given right now um, are, these are the top, what, 15, I believe, majors that we've been creating uh, through the, uh, the whole state. So, um, so for, as of June of this year, the majors that we pulled, we've pulled 249 sets of tags for somebody having a red or an amber light out. And that's something that could have been caught on a free trip. So don't come to an inspection with, I mean, really, that's why we're trying to enforce the free trip. Um, and not so much this county, I've said that, but other counties would really, it needs to be pushed and pushed and pushed so that they understand exactly what's happening here. Um, air brakes, you can hear a leak. You may not be able to find that. You're not technicians. But um, tires and wheels, we pulled 180 sets of tags um, for a tire, for ball tires, or, or a gash in the rim, or something like that. So, and that's something that could have been found in a pre-trip. Um, what do we got here? Emergency doors and exits, 175 sets of tags we pulled. So, out of all 15 of these categories, 90% of them could have been found on a pre-trip. And these tags didn't, even, didn't need to be pulled. <coughs> um, did you go to the miners next? Yep. Um, so, minor repair orders, so those are our 30-day repair orders. Um, and that's no big deal, really. But again, out of all of these categories, 90% of them, except for maybe the exhaust and um, what else we got? Uh, brakes, possibly. Um, for the most part, all of these could have been found on a pre trip inspection. And the ticket didn't need to be issued. Um, but, you know, we gave 30 days on these. So upholstery, that's a big one. But it's just a small rip, we don't care. But when they're huge and the, and the foam is showing, that's a fire hazard. Um, so we'll write 30 days on upholstery. And no one wants to sit on duct tape. Right, right. We all pay money that way for our clothes. So when I know we have some owners across the state that are like, duct tape it. There's drivers and kids, we don't want to sit duct tape. You need like your clothes, you want to sit duct tape all day. <laughs> um, so yeah, the most of those have been found in a pre trip um, the stats for this year, and the year was, was not quite done yet, so um, let me get on this side. So 17 to 18, we did 9,000 inspections. Um, 18 to 19, we were just shy, but the year wasn't out yet, so we did uh, 126 less inspections when we put this together. Um, the repair orders that were created, this year we wrote 294 more repair orders than we did the year before. Um, so there's some counties that just aren't, uh, they're just doing what they want to do, you know, and they're just waiting for us to come and find it rather than taking care of it uh, ahead of time. Um, this is impressive too. So um, out of service, so we pulled tags. So far, 399 more sets of tags this year than we did last year. Um, so last year, or last school year, we pulled 1,100 sets of tags this year, and the school year wasn't out when we put this together. We were at 1,500 sets of tags that we pulled for uh, major um, major repairs. So it's a lot. Um, and 
the other stuff that we showed, 80, 90 percent of it could have been found in pre code. So, what's next? Oh, new technologies. Um, so, with the advancements in technology comes change. Below are just, some, just a couple of changes we may be seeing in the near future. Um, so the electronic inspection, that's where we're getting all of our data, so we're using that now. We've been using that for a couple of years. It's pretty cool. Um, we can enter our inspections on the um, tablet. We can, um, owners and mechanics can log in and they can close their 30-day repair orders. If there's a major repair order, they can request a reinspection. So that's working very nice. They can enter their A inspections. Uh, Board of Ed can enter the B inspections. So it's working really well and it really has allowed us to pull this data that we have um, so that we can really show um, drivers and owners what's going on. Um, uh, electric buses uh, went on a demo in um, Baltimore County. That was very cool. It was kind of weird not hearing any noise going down the road, um, but it was, it was pretty neat. Um, I personally didn't, I felt like the bus couldn't get out of its own way, um, but that's just one manufacturer. Uh, but I think that's going to be pretty cool. I don't know. I mean, the cost is like triple what a normal bus cost is. So I don't know if it, how, how quickly it's going to come, but uh, so, you know, eventually there'll be funding. Uh, fire suppression. That's in use now. I, there's, a, 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 I think, a fleet of 10 buses in Anne Arundel County that have the fire suppression on them now, and that's pretty cool. We've got pictures of that. Uh, new designs, a lot of new stuff happening. The braking system, I went on a demo in that. I thought that was pretty impressive. Um, this is just one of the bus companies. Um, so zero emissions is one of the benefits. That's fantastic. Um, we all, all want to save the planet. Um, the 50, this is what I learned, the, the, the 50 uh, mile range and the 150 mile range, come to find out that the 150 mile range was on the smaller buses. Um, the 50 to 75 was on the big guys. Um, and that would work for, you know, somebody that's not uh, not going too far. <laughs> the downfall part about it is it takes eight hours to charge the bus. Right, exactly. Yeah, so if you use that bus in the morning, your 50 mile run, come back, plug it in, charge it, well, how are you gonna get to home in the afternoon? Right, exactly, yeah, so there's, there's, and you know what, as, as stuff advances, that they'll have fast charging and that kind of thing, um, just like they do with the smartphones. Um, this is the suppression system, this is pretty cool. So it's just for the engine. Um, so you can see these tubes and these outlets. So if, um, and there's sensors, if one of them melts, um, this goes off. So, and it's pretty cool because everything's tucked really neat underneath the bus. Um, the, the liquid or whatever chemical they use to put out engine fires, um, that's all stored here. And the compression system and the lines going up underneath the hood, that was pretty neat. I thought that was a, it was a really good idea and that's in use now in Interval County. I don't know the cost of it, you know, but that's something that the bus owner uh, wants to spend money on. The ramp, it's not available for that one. Yeah, just show them so they can look at it. Uh, they came, oh, we, yeah. we, we've seen this one. But they're not going to run um, in Maryland. So. Yeah, it's, it's not okay in Maryland yet, but it's it's coming. They're trying to get they're trying to get the okay. Um, so I think it's kind of neat. Um, and doesn't this, did you see this one? Did you see this one? Yeah. I, doesn't this slide underneath? Yeah, it slides in. Uh, from one end of, yeah, okay. So, yeah, that's kind of cool. But your wheelchair can you that. Okay, that's what it's for. Yeah. yeah. Okay, because yeah. I couldn't tell. Yeah. Okay, because you couldn't yeah. tell you just got somebody. It's having the door in the back. Can I see? And it looks like it, it looks actually like it pulls out, and I, I wasn't there for this one, that pulled like a, a U-Haul that you rent. Um, it looks like they put in Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And hopefully it'll be electric so we don't have to tug yeah. it. Uh, it looks pretty neat. Um, this was pretty cool. Um, the Bendit braking, braking system, I went to New Jersey and they took uh, us out on a bus on a road course out there and it was flying around and pulled up on a car in the middle of the, of the, of the course. And I didn't know a bus could stop that fast. Um, they were, um, it was a hydraulic brake bus. It was, uh, it was um, no, it was uh, disc air. It was disc air brakes. 
And that thing stopped so fast, I, did, I just couldn't believe it. I, I didn't know you could stop a bus that fast. Um, there has been some issues, um, I believe it was um, Baltimore County or Cecil County, somewhere up there, so a couple of owners had one. And the, in a turn, the bus was recognizing a car and, and braking on its own uh, in a turn or something like that. So there's some kinks that, that they got to work out. Um, but it was pretty cool on the road course. I thought that was kind of neat. Um, what do we have here? The real ID. Okay, 10 minutes. Okay, so the real ID uh, documents required, we'll go over that. Um, if you're a CDL holder, if you go in last minute to, to update your license to the real ID and um, you don't have the correct documents, there's no extensions for a CDL holder. So they're not going to give you time to go collect those documents if you're waiting until your, your license has expired to go to renew it. So you'll go in with a CDL and you'll come out with a Class C. So don't wait to the last minute. And it's not that hard to buy. Right. Yeah, yeah it's, it's great. Appointment, I'm scared of them. Yeah, yeah. yep. Very easy. Um, so let's go over that. So um, has, there, has most of you guys already picked, gotten That's your real ID? Story. Yes. yes, exactly. Okay. Yep. Okay. So um, uh, let me see a birth certificate or a passport. And the passport, believe it or not, can be expired up to five years and they'll still use it. Um, uh, Social Security, I couldn't find my Social Security card, so I did. I took my, a W 2 that had my whole Social Security on it, and that worked great. And two proofs of residency. Um, and here's what's cool is I, I made the appointment. And um, instead of being a walk-in and waiting around for an hour mm -hmm. or two, I was in and out in 20 minutes um, because I made the appointment. Funny story, I go down there, I've got the green and burst thing from the Bureau of Vital Statistics. You know, I've got all that and my expired passport and a new passport, mm -hmm. you know, that's current. Anyway, she takes the um, birth record thing because it doesn't have, we can't accept that. that I'm looking at her. Okay. Oh, we can use your passport. So we go through all of that and everything, and then I said, and after I got my license in my hand, I said, now, see this green card right here? I used this in 1980 to get my first passport. <laughs> okay. And they accepted it then. Mm -hmm. But yeah. you accepted the passport because, but not the green ID that I just used back in 1980. You know. I just thought it was fun, you know. The Fed, you know, I have a passport issued by the Fed. Right. Yeah. It's Homeland Security. Dumb. Yep. So really, I'm the flood. Here's some of the other photos that we come across right here doing spot checks. Uh, the spec came off the bus. Had a big gash in the wheel. Sharp metal was taken out from sharp. Wouldn't break off. The kid was grabbed and would cut him. Uh, this bus here, the window latches are broken, so the bus driver put a stick in the window. Well, I understand oh. I don't want the window up. I didn't but see it at first. That's it's right the, <coughs> an accident. Oh, I see yeah. 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 yeah, sorry. It's a, actually, you're an accident driver is knocked out or dies, the bus is on fire, now the kid cannot use that oh, bus to the emergency window. Pretty you got your window right. <laughs> so what's the right. Uh, this is a bus fire we came across. So a bus catches fire, it goes up a matter of minutes. We have all the safety stuff on there, but in reality, what was that was Speaking County, I believe. Howard County. Howard County. It was one over Route 50 too. Boy. So your seats inside will be provided by the seat upholstery, when stripped and hair, or duct tape. You get a new seat, and they all melt away. Wow. All right. So this is the bus we came across. Oh boy. Um, I'll be. Your free church can check the brakes, but no one's really going to call on the ground check the brakes. No one's going to close their aid. So did a spot check. I crawled in front of the bus, and the brakes in this bus were shot. <laughs> yeah, but you could hear metal on metal yeah. grinding the rotor. So you guys. That's the brake pad that was on that rotor on that bus. <laughs> There's no pad left. It's gone. Wow. The same bus with the brake. That's the brake pad you were put the uh, pistons back in on the caliper there. That's the pad. Oh, oh boy. So this guy said, he bought this bus and all kids to school. Does anybody know what's wrong with this picture here? Yes. Yes. Uh, rule of thumb is 12 inches. After 12 inches, too much spacing. 
Uh, this contractor here argued with us, but we tried to tell him that someone's in that seat, he slammed the brakes, the child goes flying up, gets injured. Now you have a, a lawsuit against you. And then you're going to be in the news. Uh, this bus here is a person who's getting fuel and they turn around the fuel island, caught the island, and ripped their bumper off. But they drove away all kids. Yeah. This is the things that we come across with you spot checks those days. And if we're visiting you, it's not because you're bad, it's because we're in the area. You know, um, we, we do focus on like the bad owners a whole bunch more, but, it, but we do have to kind of share the love. So on occasion, We'll send guys down just to drive around and do random inspections, and it's not because Queen Anne's County has bad buses. It's only because we really have to uh, to to visit on occasion just to show that we're doing something. Um, but we are focused, so you guys know we do focus on the bad owners quite a bit more than we focus on you guys. So one of our inspectors came across this bus. This bus had air conditioning on it. With the air conditioner housing, the bolts were missing, they used good old duct tape to tape it to the ceiling. You can't have kids centering that and duct tape, and it doesn't work. Uh, if you just the door, you can't access that because they tape the door shut. Horn! Uh, in Maryland, buses, the horn got to be in the center of the steering wheel. It cannot be mounted to the side like that. I think we're out of time, Bill. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so, that's all we got. This is one of the things we come across. Most of our guys identify themselves. They come to a spot check. 